Are we there? Yeah, we are. Um, okay, this will be very brief, but it does require everyone's thumbs up. So I wanted to raise it to the group. Um, it's time to upgrade our <clears throat> Angular code base from Angular 7 to Angular 8. And the reason I bring it up here is because it's a little bit more invasive than going from 6 to 7 or 5 to 6. So it touches a lot of files. Um, the upgrade process itself is largely automated. But once we apply those changes to master any working branches that have not yet been merged, we'll have to be tweaked. Um, and uh, so it's just something that everyone needs to be aware of. Uh, and it's also a branch that once it's created, we don't want it lingering. So um, we want to pick a time, a target date uh, and time to create the branch, test the branch, merge the branch, and kind of knock it all out and pull the Band-Aid off. Um, I was talking to uh, Galen earlier today, and uh, he has some interest in getting it done as soon as possible, and I'm very much on board with that. Um, so the only real, the only real thing that we need to do is, um, I've already started working on the branch, and when I have something working, I'll post something in the channel, uh, and then we'll need testing and merging, of course, and um, I also need to update um, a little bit of documentation with regard to how you can fix your existing. Uh, working branches. There's a tool in Angular that does it. It's, you just run a little migrate tool, um, and it's able to do about 90% of it without having to type anything manually. Um, so it's, it shouldn't be too bad, but it will impact all working branches, and it will mean anything going into 3.4 will probably be a little bit different than anything going into 3.5. So backporting is going to get funky for a little bit. Um, so Gail and I were talking about possibly doing it as early as today. Um, so if I can get the branch done, I know, right? <laughs> I was thinking, well, let's get this, sketch this out uh, a few weeks. Um, if I can get the branch done today, I'll post it and we'll see how it goes, but that might be that soon. Are there any concerns or worries? My only concern is um, you said that uh, backporting would be uh, sketchy. Is that only regarding things that were already in Angular? Framework like you know for doing backports of you know Angular JS stuff or you know older stuff that's not affected or this would only affect if I if we do the merge today um, and then tomorrow I write a new feature for the catalog it might be slightly different than the version that gets backported to three four so it's only the Angular code right and it'll only affect code um, for future developments on the Angular side and it'll affect code that's already in the working branch. That we want to get into 3.5 and 3.4. Right. That's Angular. So I, w I would guess that most of the working branches would be done by people who are in this room. Seems fair. I mean, don't you think? I mean, I, I'm guessing. Because I mean, you know, the people who are working in Angular and, and kind of know have, have advanced to that and aren't just playing catch up, like some of us. <laughs> um, I think I, w I would say. I mean, it makes sense. I would say pull pull the band-aid and just go. Okay. Myself. Okay. I was sorry, I was trying to get something to compile while you were doing the lead up. Is that is there a reason why we definitely need to backport this to three four or earlier? Or should it only be should we say whatever you were released with, that's your Angular version? Like 3.4's Angular version is the is the version that 3.4.0 came with, and so on and so forth. I had assumed that we would do Angular 8 only in master slash 3.5, but there's no reason we can't. Well, that might make things easier. Okay. Right. Well, one of uh, the concrete uh, things about backporting. Um, Angular 8 stuff uh, to Angular 7 is I've also been playing around with uh, Bill's branch and there, are, there actually isn't uh, very much um, that's a mandatory change uh, going back uh, from 8 to 7. Um, specifically the two things are if you use the child um, to port it back to Angular um, 7 you'll need to remove a you know, uh, a decorator, you know, saying whether, you know, you're, you know, exactly when uh, you're looking uh, for the child, uh, but that's wrote. Um, there's also a change uh, in how um, the, uh, you know, you know, you know, 
in, in how you know DD uh, CSS uh, you know, selector is used, but again, that doesn't uh, come up uh, very often. So I don't see it as adding a particular backporting uh, burden, and, and it's uh, something I think that we can document uh, pretty well. I think overall, my inclination would be to not um, bump up uh, Angular later versions between you know releases. You know, unless something happens where it's absolutely necessary because of a um, security uh, you know issue or you know, core a security issue with core anchor or something like that. Uh, Matt, Bill, sorry, would you use the microphone? Um, I'm not going to say all that again. <laughs> the migration changes aren't that bad. Once you know what to look for, it's very easy. Uh, but everyone has to keep an eye out. And it will probably affect many files because view child is fairly common, but it's an easy change to make once you know what you're looking for. Um, so I, I, I think I agree with that. that not hard to manage the backporting, um, and I also have some reservations about backporting Angular 8, mostly just because it will shuffle some things that maybe we don't want shuffled. Um, so I'll, I'll get the branch going, and um, we'll just take it from there. All right, thank you.